Hey guys, this is one of those infamous LG refrigerators with the uh, inverter scroll compressor and the compressor has failed. And we determined that just by lack of cooling. The compressor is running, everything else in the fridge operates fine. But if you look at that model number right there and do a Google search, this is one of the infamous compressors that always fails. So in this video, we're gonna take it apart and see why it's a piece of junk. Okay, so we evacuated the refrigerant. Uh, now we're gonna pull the compressor out. Got the compressor out on the bench, cut all the refrigerant lines, and again, we evacuated the refrigerant. Uh, we did not vent it to the atmosphere. Um, then we just have to cut this weld along the top. We'll do that with a grinder, and that'll expose the internal guts of this steaming pile of crap. Gonna use my trusty Milwaukee four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff blade to cut the top of this thing off right above the weld. Probably enough of that. Uh, pick it up when we're done. I wised up a little bit and clamped the thing to the bench and I switched the guard. It was getting a little precarious, so uh, safety first, right? All right, so I think we got it decapitated here. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got a tiny little bit right here. Let's snip that off. Ears. And she is officially decapitated. So this is what we're dealing with inside. Lots of metal shavings, but it's probably from the grinding process. Now let's get it taken apart. So I think the way these things work is that control board in the fridge controls how much current and voltage goes to through a magnetic coil here. And these springs are like return springs. So it, there's no rotating parts like there is in a traditional refrigerator compressor. Um, it's all linear. I believe what typically goes wrong on these things is under here. So let's get this pump assembly out and we'll start taking it apart. Zip a couple wires on the refrigerant line, the whole thing goes out. I take it outside and blow up all the metal shavings. Took these two screws out here, seven millimeter, and this whole spring assembly kind of came loose. So let's see if we can figure out where this thing failed. Not too sure what I'm looking at yet. Well, now we'll take these out. Again, all, all seven. Let's see. Got a nice bolts. I'll save these. <laughs> Looks like this whole assembly might come apart now. Some shims here. All right, let me pry it apart. I'm gonna part just yet. Let's take off these sevens here too. Almost looks like a valve cover. So we'll see what it is in a second. Something magnetic is in there. See if I can set you guys down. Take the vibrations out of the equation. <clears throat> so can we 
fry this up. It's not gonna come off. Maybe not yet. Maybe, not sure. Not sure. Okay. This thing is pretty tricky. It's held together with bolts and when you take them out, it's a mystery. There we go. So something came off on the top. So I'm just going to pop this thing with the screwdriver. There's a refrigerant line. This looks like a piston of some kind in there. That's what the inside of the head looks like. Not sure exactly what that is. It appears to be springy. It's dirty, but I don't see any obvious signs of failure yet. But you can kind of see, I think, how this mechanism works. It appears that there's a coil in this section that energizes and pulls this whole assembly this way, towards me, towards this way. And I'm guessing that the control board is responsible for turning this magnetic field off and on really quickly. Hence the term a linear compressor. There's no rotating parts, everything just moves in a line. I'm guessing that's how this is supposed to work. But again, what failed? So, ooh, there's some more, there's some tiny screw bolts here. Maybe that's what we need to remove. They are pretty tiny. And this whole plate comes out. I think they were five and a half, six. I guess this plate comes out too. Again, not entirely sure what this whole deal is here. Come on, there we go. Throw in one more. last two off buried down there. Something came loose. Okay, so now that whole assembly came off. Let's see what that is. Okay, now this whole deal comes apart. And you can see the field coil wire there. Now what? What do we do now? This thing moves around in here. What does that do? Oh, there's our, our piston right there. Right. I'm moving it back and forth with my finger now. So, still, what went wrong? It's very dirty. Really flimsy piece of metal on here on this piston. There's some oil in here too. So what what next? How does this come apart? It's not gonna come out this way. This whole metal assembly didn't go anywhere. If you look carefully at some of this too, you can see that, like see those trails there? I wonder if this thing was leaking somewhere. There's no obvious odor. That thing smells burnt. This is a tough one. What was wrong with this thing? I 
Let's see. The only thing that might come next is this piece probably might just lift up. I don't see any bolts. Is it loose? Oh yeah, it's loose. Okay, so then this whole thing needs to come out of that field coil. Definitely a two-handed operation. So this whole thing came out. We got these uh, little magnets here. It came out with the assembly. Just put them back on the well, these just permanent magnets. Fairly strong. They actually just like a, look like a laminated cores. Did they become magnetic after years of use? Let's see, this seems to want to come apart now. Oh, another two-handed operator. Okay, so that pulled right off. There's a shim on there. And this looks like the piston right here. Number six on it. Maybe that's uh details as to how it was machined. You can see no ring. There is some noticeable scoring, or not scoring, but just wear and tear. On the base of the shaft, you can see it's kind of shiny there. There's some wear and tear right there too, but overall it doesn't look bad. And I wonder if this plate right here is what failed. I don't see anything wrong with it, though. Very strange. There's a snap ring right down here. I don't know what it holds in, but let's take it out. Didn't shoot across the room. That's a good sign. So what does that hold? These things look like cooling pins here. sure what that retained though. Again, no obvious sign of failure yet. Let's keep digging. Bingo, found the failure. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is part of that cylinder head that I took off and notice there's a small tear in this seal. Oh, this came apart. Maybe I can give you a better view of it now. You can see, you can see light through it right there. So this tiny, what, 25 cent part is what caused this $1,200 refrigerator to go kaput. It's a shame. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a, a fairly common failure mode. What a shame. Anyway, hope you guys found this interesting. Obviously, this is not going back together. It's going to go in the trash. These things are sealed hermetically, and they're not designed to be serviced. I had to cut mine apart with a grinder, as you saw. So this is just, uh, this is just for my own edification on how these things work, and hopefully you guys got some use out of it, too. Oh, wow, this spring is pretty worn. This flat's worn on it. Just a bad design. Anyway, take care, guys. If you like that video, please subscribe.